Hello, this is Debu Tripathi, Editor-in-Chief of Cure Magazine, coming to you from the 32nd Annual Miami Breast Cancer Conference. One of the topics that was covered today that really affects a large number of people is that of genetic testing for familial risk for breast and ovarian cancer. Over the last 10 to 15 years, we've identified specific genes that people can inherit if mutated uh, will increase the risk of breast and ovarian cancer uh, by many, many fold times. And it's important for us to detect this. Uh, many times, patients are diagnosed at the time that they actually develop cancer and we find out from their family history that they may carry one of these genes. The two most common genes are BRCA1 and 2, and it's estimated that in the general population, maybe 1 in 200 or 1 in 300 may carry this gene, a mutated version of this gene, I should say. Although in certain populations it may be higher, for example, in Israel, uh, due to the ethnicity, Ashkenazi Jewish individuals, it may be as high as 1 in 40. So the debate right now is, should we be screening patients more proactively? Not when they're diagnosed with breast cancer, but on the basis of their family history. Uh, it is now increasingly recognized that when you go to the doctor that a family history is taken for heart disease, kidney disease, and also for cancer. And patients who, uh, or individuals who have uh, several family members affected with a particular type of cancer, or who uh, developed it at a young age, particularly ovarian cancer, which is more likely to be inherited, these are the factors that raise our suspicion. So the uh, uh, criteria for testing patients who are diagnosed with breast cancer are fairly straightforward. Anybody who's diagnosed under age 45 or so, uh, we usually recommend genetic counseling first so that they understand the implications of genetic testing. And then once they understand and agree to proceed, then actually genetic testing for BRCA1 and 2. Also, for people that have a very strong family history, particularly ovarian cancer or male breast cancer, uh, these are also flags that would raise suspicion. Now, as the testing has gotten more sophisticated, it's also become more accurate. When we first started doing testing, we would sometimes get results back that we couldn't clearly say was a mutation that could increase the risk. There are many variations in our DNA that may not necessarily be mutations, and these are known as variants of unknown significance. But as we have gotten more data and been able to look up the extended family of these individuals, th th the number of these uh, unknown variants has actually gone down, and so the testing is more accurate and we feel more confident. Now, one of the developments that has occurred with next generation sequencing is that in, we can look not only for BRCA1 and 2, but we can look across the whole genome and I identify other genes that have more recently also been associated with an increased risk of breast cancer, although we know less about these genes. Uh, they go by names like PALB2, BARD1, and RAD51. Uh, so these are um, genes that uh, we're still learning about and the, these variants of unknown significance where we don't even know if it alters the gene function or not is a much higher percentage of cases. So we are now starting to use what is called panel testing, 17 or sometimes even more genes in addition to BRCA1 and 2 that would uh, allow us, particularly in patients with a strong family history who have a normal BRCA1 and 2 and we're, we're looking for what is causing the uh, p possible familial association. So this is a big controversy and it was debated uh, very widely uh, at uh, today's conference and the uh, the real answer is unclear at this time. It's a trade-off between trying to get more information and then getting information that you don't know how to process. A lot of patients that are found to have mutations in these other genes, we may not know exactly what their risk is. And some of the implications for this are quite profound. We recommend not only enhanced screening, but we recommend that patients consider having their ovaries removed before the age of 35, especially because ovarian cancer is harder to detect. With breast cancer, also preventive surgery is a consideration, although we do have screening techniques that are uh, somewhat effective, although not 100% effective. So this is an ongoing controversy. It's something that women who are undergoing uh, counseling because of a familial history uh, should be aware of. And it's difficult to communicate this uh, because it is complicated, as you can tell by the length of this video. Uh, and so it's critical that patients get genetic counseling and not just testing in the doctor's office. Genetic counselors can spend the extra time, sit down, they have the expertise to talk not only about the science behind it, but a lot of the emotional issues and patient choice issues and preferences that go into making this important decision.